I'm Aydel al Mahroui. I'm speaking to you from Egypt and specifically in a village called Arab Iran. It's a small village not far away from the Egyptian capital Cairo, but definitely far enough from the pollution of the city. This is absolutely wonderful day to be here, fresh air in the middle of agricultural fields. And we're here to begin an early celebration for the Chinese New Year, the year of the rabbit, by showing you how Egyptians think, breed and take care about rabbits. Right here in this building, um, inside it is a small rabbit uh, breeding facility owned by one of the villagers who lives here. Um, in general, Egyptians in the ruler, they breed a lot of animals. Some, some of them, they would breed them uh, personally on their rooftops or in their backyards and others would do it professionally as sort of a kind of a, a business. Um, this facility is a business through which rabbits are mainly bred uh, for their meat. Uh, to be uh, later on part of delicious Egyptian dishes. One of the most famous um, Egyptian dishes is called uh, molokheya. It's a stew, a vegetable stew, and Egyptians believe it is best made with rabbit broth. We're not taking you into um, the kitchen, just showing you how um, these lovely animals are being bred. You can follow us this stream on CGTN's all online um, channels, the official website at cgtn.com, our YouTube channel, uh, and Twitter handling, as well as our Facebook page. Now I'm going to take you inside um, the building where this um, very interesting um, simulation or a, a practice of breeding rabbits um, take place. Now because it's winter in this part of the world, it is very important to keep the rabbits warm. So inside, they measure, they measure the temperature, they make sure it's around plus give or take 20 degrees Celsius, the windows become sealed, and um, because it's warm, they take uh, the, you see the plastic uh, cloth they have here, usually they cover the cages at night so that the rabbits would not get cold. Uh, in daytime, when it's uh, warm enough, they take off uh, these um, covers too so that the rabbits can uh, breathe normally. I'll give you a different uh, perspective so you can see. Um, so these are several lines through which rabbits uh, get, um, uh, they, they get breed, they live, they get eat, they get to eat and drink. Um, the facilities are all connected um, together. In general, um, Egyptians have um, uh, quite uh, interesting beliefs about uh, rabbits um, themselves. Uh, a rabbit uh, in Arabic or, uh, is called arnab, and in, um, in, in the economic business culture, uh, an arnab, uh, arnab, the term, or a rabbit, is a sign of wealth. So if you say you have an arnab, it's an indication that you're saying you have a million Egyptian pounds. And because rabbits breed a lot, um, in the business community it says that al arnab, the million pounds, has the ability to multiply a lot. So once you have an arnab, a million pounds, you can easily become richer. So one of the um, culture aspects of rabbits that they are a sign of wealth and their name is used in Egypt to refer to millions in business transactions. It also applies to a cost, for example, if you're buying a house or a car, so you, people may refer um, in um, the popular areas to the cost in numbers of rabbits. So how many rabbits is this? One and a half rabbits. Two, two, two rabbits, 3.5 rabbits, and that's a reference, of course, again, um, to millions. In this um, facility, so you would see parts where rabbits are being fed and growing, and then there are other parts where there are boxes. Inside these boxes is where the breeding um, takes place. So a rabbit mama would be sitting with her joeys um, to feed them in different stages of their growth. If you can see inside here, they're hiding inside, keeping shelter on the straw to be warm. And not all rabbits have direct access to their mommies when they're younger, because their um, feeding has to be regulated. Um, the boxes between um, the small joeys and their mama uh, would be locked. In this one, for instance, if you take a look inside, you see that there's a gate access through which the joeys can go to their mama for their daily meals. 
lovely beings. Uh, on the other hand, when they're younger, so when they're, not y they're younger, you would see um, that the boxes through which they are in, they would get um, locked. So these are newly bred tiny beings, see how small they are. And the doors are locked so that um, the owner of the facility can regulate uh, when they would get their food. I'll try to get a one in, in my hand, very small, to, to show you just how tiny this being is and how cute it is as well. They are, the, the, the tiny Joes you've just seen are just one year old. Now this little mama, she's pregnant. And if you take a notice, there is a difference between, look at the bottom, and in the, la in, in the depth inside, you see that this is the only one that has plenty of fur at the bottom. She is pregnant, and she's getting ready to give birth. Her due date, luckily enough for us, is today. So what she does is that she collects her fur and then creates a sort of a natural bed so that when she gave birth, there's a soft bottom for her young ones. See how fur she's been collecting all day long, preparing for her uh, birth. And of course, the breeders here would help her with um, straw so that when she gave birth, there's a more um, comfortable uh, bedding uh, for the young joys. Now, um, I will be joined now by Dr. Uh, Mohammed uh, El Sawi. Uh, he's a professor of rabbit management uh, at the AR ARI, the uh, Animal Research Institute. It's a research facility, part of the Egyptian Ministry of Agriculture, and he's a research specialized in animal, specifically rabbit uh, breeding. Thank you very much, Dr. Mohammed, for being with us. Um, quickly, Keda, I want to ask you about rabbits in Egyptian culture. <laughs> للأرانب في مصر. الموروث الثقافي للأرانب في مصر إنها حيوانات تنتج لحوم صحية أكثر من كل أنواع الحيوانات المزرعية الأخرى. لحوم تتميز بانخفاض نسبة الكوليسترول، بارتفاع نسبة البروتين، احتراقها على بعض العناصر المعدنية زي الفوسفورس، زي الكالسيوم. So he's, he's talking about uh, the rabbit in terms of um, a, a nutritious, uh, nutritious animal protein and that it is rich in phosphorus, calcium, calcium high protein, high and high protein value and, uh, low, uh, cholesterol. and low cholesterol level because it's a, a kind of a white meat so it doesn't have um, the high cholesterol levels that um, meat like um, and cows, for instance, uh, have. And in, in Egyptian culture, um, I, whenever I go to a farm, uh, a, a, a ruler place, they usually would show off all their animals, but when it comes to rabbits, they lock them behind, they don't want strangers to look at them. Why is that? No. Uh, they don't want to look at them. They don't want to look at them. خاصة بالأرانب وهي إنها عند قياس درجة الخوف بتاعتها وجد إنها من أكثر الحيوانات خوفا وده علميا معناه ارتفاع نسبة هرمون الأدرينالين عند وجود أي غريب التعرض لأي مؤثر غريب رائح بتؤثر الحيوانات دي حاسة الشم عندها ضعف حاسة الشم عند الكلاب وزي فيها بتتأثر بأي غراب بأي روائح غريبة غير الناس المتعاملين معها فبيحصل لها ارتفاع مفاجئ في الأدرينالين وده بيعقبه حالات مرضية كتير وحالات كتير. So in Egyptian culture, he says that um, some believe that um, um, strangers could envy uh, an owner for having rabbits. Uh, not only because how uh, beautiful or cute the animals are, but because also they breed uh, a lot. But there's also another scientific explanation to why um, some believe that when um, their rabbits are exposed to strangers, they might catch a disease and in some cases die, and is that um, um, the rabbit is usually uh, easily frightened. Yes. And that induces high level of adrenaline, which could harm 
um, its health when exposed to stranger or when it, is, it becomes part of an uncomfortable uh, environment. And this is one of the explanations why people wh might um, expect some interruptions in their um, animal's behavior if they get exposed to uh, others. Uh, and besides um, that part, there's also the part about wealth I was just talking about, that they say if you have an arnab, it's a million pounds, so you, you, would be, you can easily get mm -hmm. uh, more rich. Uh, why do you think this comes from? هي اللفظ اطلق على الارنب او على المليون باوند بارنب ده لفظ اطلق من الساده التجار يعني منذ زمن بعيد وده يمكن ارتباط ما بين سرعه التناسل والتكاثر انت لو جبت خمس امهات زائد ذكر وتركتهم عدد حوالي اربع الى خمس سنوات ممكن يصلوا الى مليون ارنب حقيقي يعني حاجة حساب نظري باعتبار ان مفيش أي نافق مفيش حاجة هتموت وكله بيولد ويتناسل ودورة الحياة بتاعته سريعة يعني أربع لست شهور بيحصل تناسل تاني يوصل إلى متولية ذكر وثمان وثمان أنثات وحوالي خمس خمس سو إلى حوالي مليون تقريبا هي سينج ذات ذا تيرم أرنب أز أي واز إكسبلينينج أيرلي ذات إتس إز مليون باوند إت كومز بيكوز إت كومز فروم Egyptian merchants long uh, ago and um, the, the, the reason that that comes from is that because they breed a lot and once you acquire a rabbit they can multiply and he was just giving an example if everything moves perfectly without any disease or harm if you get one male rabbit and uh, five uh, females females. You leave them for five years. Yes. Five years. Uh, their population could reach one million mm. rabbits. So this is how fast um, they breed. Uh, doctor, thank you very much. Um, you know, China is celebrating the year of the rabbit when the new year. So happy new year to you and to everyone who's uh, watching. Sh uh, so let me um, continue um, the tour here. So this is the station um, where the breeding happens and the feeding of the young um, joeys. Okay, and in every box it is written if they gave birth, so it's the date of birth, here it's going to be the due uh, uh, date, which is uh, 1 14 January 14, that is um, when we're filming this. And the rabbits keep staying with their mommies until they're about this big. When they're that size, they move on to different facilities where they can be um, fed and live independently uh, far from um, their uh, mommy's care. This is the breeding um, section, so all the big rabbits here are females, and then they later get moved to a different position where, first of all, they be fed to grow um, their uh, weight, and then later on taken to merchants and um, the Egyptian uh, markets. Over there, across the other part of this facility, you would see the young rabbits getting uh, uh, eating and enjoying um, their stay until they find a new home or a new uh, market. And the numbers, of course, are so um, remarkable. Uh, you can see lots of rabbits uh, in this uh, facility, and this is just um, uh, an, an average sized uh, place. This is not a huge breeding uh, rabbits uh, facility. In general, uh, rabbits, um, they're considered like um, the second most um, demanded uh, animal protein after chicken. And that's due to the health benefits that we talked about. And it also um, due to um, the price, the cost of um, animal, um, the, 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 uh, the rabbit's protein. And it, it, it depends on the, the market and the season, but it usually, sometimes it matches, sometimes it's a, a bit higher or lower than um, a chicken. And that puts it uh, in Egypt way less, about half the cost of one kilo of um, red meat um, from um, cows, for instance. And that's why it is considered one of the highly um, demanded proteins, but it's not as popular as chicken. So if, for instance, some families would get once a week a meal of chicken or two, twice a week, rabbits maybe come in uh, once a month. Um, some, for some families, it's more um, than that. And as for now, um, they get to enjoy 
the Egyptian winter weather, which is not so cold today, it's about 22, 23 degrees Celsius. So they have a bit of sunlight, their covers are up so that they can have um, some a, uh, time to breathe um, fresh air coming in slightly into this uh, room to maintain the temperature there. And at night, they will be covered to be protected. And then routinely, um, vets would come to check upon them to make sure that the, their health is good, that they're not catching disease, and that um, they will be one time ready to go um, to the market. But that's a brief story about a lovely um, creature Sorry about that. So that's the story about a lovely creature that in Egyptian culture represents a lot of wealth, stability, and in terms of supporting uh, people, um, the rabbit in terms of animal protein is the second um, after chicken uh, in Egypt. Uh, meanwhile, um, this, the stories that I was talking to you about are always in Egyptian movies so you'd see in Egyptian movies businessmen talk in rabbits terms instead of uh, millions and even though science um, has explained um, the reasons that in um, old days believed that uh, envy could harm one's rabbit um, some farmers up to date prefer to keep the rabbits away from stranger lockdown no one would see them although they can show them around um, the rest uh, of um, their animals um, so that's it. If you have any questions, uh, in the meantime, let me know until I give you um, the rest uh, of the tour for this uh, facility uh, where rabbits are being uh, bred. The alternative to such a facility, by the way, would be someone's uh, house. Uh, farmers would breed. Of course, it's a, a much smaller um, scale in terms of uh, uh, production uh, uh, volume, but they would do that on the rooftops. So you'll find a very small um, shed that has many animals, ducks, geese, turkeys, and um, rabbits, of course, because in terms of size, they can be easily transported. Uh, but also, um, the numbers would be much less. Of course, the cost for such a business like this one, it needs a lot of care. So it needs a lot of veterinarian care. It needs workers to be hired and work here um, to look after the rabbits. And it also uh, needs a lot of food for the rabbits. But when it comes um, to small house um, rabbit breeding, it's much smaller. Um, you don't have to hire people. You don't have to rent a place. You just do that on uh, your rooftop. So that's it uh, for me today. I'm Adil Mahri reporting to you uh, from uh, Arab Ira, one of the villages in Egypt, in North Africa, where rabbits are being taken care of and being prepared um, to be part of um, other homes and uh, famous um, Egyptian uh, dishes um, as this animal, and we mark the year of the rabbit about to start, represents a lot of deep uh, connectivity for Egyptians and in the Egyptian culture. Thank you, and that's it for me today.